Reproduction in Plants Living things live for a definite age and after that they die. To continue their number on the earth, they need to reproduce their identical individuals. All plants, animals, humans, microbes reproduce and produce their babies. Thus, we can say that the process of producing young ones of their own by the living organisms is called reproduction. There are different organs of reproduction in different organisms. Flower is the reproductive organ in plants. But there are many other plants which do not have flowers. They also reproduce and multiply their numbers. Plants reproduce by several ways to produce their offsprings. These ways of reproduction in plants can be divided into two main categories. Asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction does not require both parents to produce young ones. Only one parent organism is required for the multiplication and formation of new organisms. It occurs without seeds. The common methods of asexual reproduction in plants are fragmentation, spore formation, budding, vegetative propagation. Fragmentation Fragmentation occurs by breaking the body into fragments or into two or more pieces. It occurs in some algae like Spirogyra and Oscillatoria. The filament of these algae breaks into two or more fragments. Each fragment then grows into a new plant. The process of fragmentation continues and within a short period of time, algae grow over large area. Spore formation Some lower plants like fungi, ferns, lichens reproduce by spore formation under favorable conditions. Spores are small, thick walled structures covered by hard protective coating that helps them to survive in harsh weather conditions. On the availability of favorable conditions, that is, sufficient food, right temperature and moisture, these spores grow into a new organism. Spores of bread mold, rhizopus, are so tiny that they keep floating in the air. When they find a suitable condition like moist bread, they start growing and multiply in huge numbers. The mold has fine thread-like outgrowths. These outgrowths are called hyphae, which have tiny round structures on the top called sporangium. The sporangium contains spores in them. Budding Some simple organisms like yeast and hydra reproduce by budding. In budding, the small outgrowths are produced called buds. The buds grow on the parent body and finally break off and start growing into a new individual. Sometimes a bud remains attached with the parent body and keeps producing more buds. Hydra is a small freshwater organism. Budding in hydra stores with a small bud developed from the parent hydra. Yeast is a non-green single called fungus. Vegetative propagation. The reproduction by vegetative parts like stem, root and leaves in plants is called vegetative propagation. The vegetative propagation is commonly used in agriculture and horticulture for the production of vegetables and fruits in large numbers. It can be carried out by natural and artificial methods. Natural vegetative propagation In plants, natural means of vegetative propagation are roots, stem, sub-aerial stems and leaves. These plant parts modify to undertake the function of vegetative reproduction. Modified roots some roots modify to undergo vegetative propagation in addition to their normal functions. For example, the roots of sweet potato, dahlia, carrot, turnip and radish multiply by their freshy roots and give rise to new plants. Modified stems Some stems grow underground and store food in them. These modified stems like tuber, bulb, rhizome and corn help in the multiplication of plants. Tuber Potato and artichoke are the common examples of tubers or modified stems. The eyes or buds present on the tuber develop into new plants. Bulb Onion, garlic, tulip, lily and tuberose are some common modified stems known as bulbs. Bulbs have thick leaves which store food in them. Ginger, turmeric and banana are some modified stems known as rhizomes. Their buds produce some outgrowths which produce new plants. Corm Gladiolus, Crocus, Colocasia are corms. Corms have many rhizomes joined together which develop into new plants. By sub-aerial stems 
In some plants, the main plant develops side shoots, which have buds that grow into new plants. For example, strawberry, mint and grasses. These plants grow horizontally on the soil surface or just below it, or subaerial. By leaves, some plants like bryophyllum or colunchoe and begonia can multiply by the buds present in the margins of their leaves. These buds fall on the ground and grow into new plants. Artificial Vegetative Propagation The process of growing new plants by using their vegetative parts by man-made methods is called artificial vegetative propagation. Some of these artificial methods are cutting, grafting, layering and tissue culture. Cutting The part of the plant which is removed by cutting it from the parent plant is called cutting. In this method, a healthy stem of a plant having leaf buds is cut off and planted in moist soil. After some time, on getting favourable conditions, the branches develop into a new plant. Cutting method of vegetative propagation is commonly used to grow plants like rose, grapes, sugarcane and bougainvillea. Grafting It is a very common method to grow plants of rose, mango, apple, pear, grape, peach, guava and many other fruit plants. In grafting, two different plants are joined together so as to produce a new plant containing the characters of both the plants. It is carried out by Cyan, a small part of one plant which is inserted into the stem or root system of another plant fixed into the soil. The cyan contains several buds. Stalk is the part of another plant which is fixed in the soil and in which cyan is inserted. Both cyan and stalk are then firmly tied together. Cyan gets the mineral and water from the soil through the stalk and develops branches and produces fruits. The tissues of cyan and stalk join with each other after a few days and develops as a new variety of plant. Layering In this method, a young branch is bent towards the ground and covered with moist soil. This covered part, which is in contact of soil, produces new roots. The branch is then separated from the parent plant and allowed to grow into new plant. This method of vegetative propagation is called layering. Layering is used to grow plants like jasmine, grapevine, bougainvillea, lemon, etc. Tissue culture. In this method is used to grow plants like orchids, chrysanthemum, asparagus and many other plants. A piece of tissue is cut from the plant and kept in a nutrient medium. The nutrient medium contains hormones that make the cells divide and form the group of cells. The small tissue grows like a mass of cells called callus. The roots develop and at this stage, callus is kept in different nutrient mediums containing hormones to allow the shoots to grow. After desired growth, these plantlets are then planted into moist soil. Advantages of Vegetative Propagation it is a quick and economical method for the large-scale production of plants. Using plant parts takes less time to multiply into new plants than waiting for seeds to grow. Therefore, it is commonly applied to grow fruit-bearing plants. The identical copies of their parents are produced by this method. This allows farmers to grow plants of desired characteristics on a large scale. Plants propagated vegetatively do not need much attention compared to those grown by seeds in the starting years. Plants of new varieties of desired qualities can be produced by this method. Sexual reproduction Sexual reproduction requires both male and female gametes to produce a new organism. The plants mostly reproduce by sexual reproduction. In plants, the flower carries out the function of reproduction. It is made up of following four worlds. Calyx is an outermost whorl, is made up of sepals, which are usually green or sometimes colored. Corolla is the next whorl after calyx. It contains bright and colorful petals. Androsium is a whorl composed of a number of stamens. Stamens are the male reproductive organs for flower. A stamen has a long stalk called the filament, which bears pollen sacs called anther. An anther is filled with pollen grains or male gametes. Gynetium is a whorl which is made up of pistils. It is the female reproductive part of the flower. The pistil contains a sticky or feathery stigma, 
a tubular style and an ovary which contains ovules. Unisexual and bisexual flowers The flowers which contain either stamens or pistils are called unisexual flowers or incomplete flowers. All four worlds are not present in them. For example, the flowers of plants like sunflower, castor, papaya, cucumber, bottle guard and bitter guard are unisexual. Bisexual flowers or complete flowers have both stamens and pistils. They have all the four worlds present. The examples of bisexual flowers are rose, china rose, oleander, hibiscus, sweet pea, etc. Pollination Pollen grains or male gametes are present in the anthers. Anthers are sac-like structures on the top of filament of the stamens. When anthers burst and release pollen grains, these are carried to the stigma of the female part of the plant by pollinating agents like insects, birds, wind or water. When insects and birds visit flowers to feed nectar, some pollen grains stick to their wings and back and transfer to another flower. This transfer of pollen grains from one flower to another is called pollination. The pollination can be either cross-pollination or self-pollination. Cross-pollination When transfer of pollen grains occurs from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower or another plant of the same type is known as cross-pollination. Cross-pollination commonly occurs in plants of maize, coconut, grasses, etc. Self-pollination when the transfer of pollen grains occurs from the anther to the stigma of the same flower or to the stigma of another flower of the same plant, it is termed as self-pollination. It can be seen in pea, rice, wheat, etc. Agents of Pollination Pollination in plants is carried out by different pollinating agents. These pollinating agents may be insects, wind and water. Pollination by Insects the flowers pollinated by insects are large, showy and bright in color. They produce fragrance to invite insects and produce nectar as food for them. The pollens of insect pollinated flowers are sticky or spiny which stick or cling to the body of insects. Some examples of insect pollinated flowers are China rose, petunia, salvia, pea and sunflower etc. Pollination by wind The wind pollinated flowers are small, not bright and often green. These flowers do not produce fragrance and nectar. Their stamens are long and protruding types which help in the release of pollen grains in the air. The stigmas of wind-pollinated flowers are long and exposed to the air. For example, wheat, maize, paddy, etc. Pollination by water Water pollination is common in aquatic plants. The water-pollinated flowers release their pollens in the water and carried by water currents to the other flowers. For example, sea grasses and vallicinaria. Fertilization In plants, after pollination, next step of reproduction is fertilization. The pollen grain or male gamete falls and sticks to the stigma during pollination. Now it starts developing pollen tube which grows downwards into the style. The pollen tube carries the male gamete through the style into the ovary. In the ovary, the male gamete then enters an ovule where the female gamete or egg is present. In the ovule, the male and female gametes fuse together and form the fertilized egg or the zygote. This fusion of male and female egg cell in the ovary is called fertilization. After fertilization, the other parts of the flower such as sepals, petals and stamens fall off. The zygote formed by fertilization develops to form a filament-like structure and grows to become an embryo. The embryo develops into a seed or mature ovule while the surrounding ovary develops into a fruit. The embryo consists of a plumule, radical and an embryonic axis to which two fleshy cotyledons are attached. The cotyledons store food for the embryo. Seeds are attached to the fruits by a stalk. The stalk on the maturity gets detached and leaves a scar called hilum. A protective layering called seed coat covers the seed. The plumule develops into shoot system and the radical grows as the root. The seeds germinate as new plants on the availability of suitable conditions like temperature, air and water. Fruit formation After seed formation, the ovary begins to swell and becomes a fruit. 
we can say that a fruit is actually a developed and mature ovary. Some fruits have single seeds and some may contain many seeds inside them. Fruits are generally sweet, juicy or pulpy, colored structure which enclose seeds. The examples of some fleshy and juicy fruits are mango, apple, peach, orange, etc. Some fruits have hard and woody shell example, almonds and walnuts. Dispersal of seeds Seeds require the dispersal to different places away from their parent plant. If they all fall in one place, there would be competition for food, water, minerals, light and space. As a result, seeds may not grow as healthy plants or they may die due to scarcity of essential conditions for germination. To avoid this condition, the fruits and seeds are dispersed to distant places. The different factors which disperse them are wind, water and animals or by their own fruit explosion mechanism. Dispersal by wind the seeds dispersed by wind are small and light. The features of these seeds are Some seeds like drumstick and maple have wings which help them in their dispersal. The tufts of hair in madar and dandelion seeds help to be carried away easily by the wind. Some seeds like lufa or tori and datura are dispersed by sensor mechanism. Their fruits become perforated to release seeds by swinging in the air. Dispersal by animals. The seeds and fruits which are dispersed by animals and human beings have some characteristics. Animals swallow some seeds as food and eliminate them with their feces to different places. On getting suitable conditions for germination, these seeds grow into new plants. Some seeds like xanthium and tiger nail stick to the hair of animals and are carried away to the various places. Cucumber and watermelon seeds also stick to the animal bodies and are dispersed to different areas. We eat fruits like mango, apple, orange, etc. and throw their seeds anywhere. This helps in their dispersal. Dispersal by water The seeds of plants which grow near coastal areas or riverside are generally dispersed by water. For example, seeds like coconut, lily and lotus, etc. can travel long distances through water. The coconut seeds have fibrous husk which helps them to keep afloat on water. They have large air cavity inside which helps them to keep floating. Germination of seed. The seeds obtained from a large plant usually dry. In this dry state, the seeds can remain alive but inactive for long periods. In this condition, the seeds are called dormant. When a seed gets water, air and warmth, etc., it begins to grow. The process of growing tiny plant from a seed on the availability of optimum temperature, right quantity of water and air, it is called seed germination. Germination begins when the seed absorbs water, swells and bursts through the seed coat. The water helps the food to make it soluble and available for the tiny plant inside the seed to grow. The radical of the seed grows first to form the root. The root pushes down into the soil and begins to absorb water and minerals from the soil. After this, the plumule grows upwards to form the shoot. The shoot and root grow further. When the shoot comes up above the ground, it develops green leaves. The green leaves of the shoot begin to synthesize own food in the presence of sunlight. This seedling grows gradually and ultimately